This is the 24th lecture for MA 1012 at University College Cork. In this lecture, we're going to look at inhomogeneous linear equations with constant coefficients. So these are equations that look something like this. So a constant coefficient times the second derivative, a constant coefficient times the first derivative, a constant coefficient times y equals, but now we have an inhomogeneity over here, some function of x, and this is assumed known. The unknown is always for us what function y equals y of x is the is the solution to this differential equation. We'll assume we're given a, b, c, and f uh, explicitly, and we want to find an explicit formula for, for, the func for this function y uh, equals y of x that satisfies this. Well, we know a general fact about these sorts of equations with inhomogeneities, which is simply that if uh, we guess somehow some one solution often called a particular solution y equals y p of x, then um, to this equation, then the general solution, every possible solution in other words, is uh, that you can take y to be the particular solution with the right inhomogeneity popping out plus any solution of the, in, of the homogeneous, where y0 of x is any solution. So you have that one particular solution, and then you can add on to it lots of different possibilities. You can add on to it anything that solves uh, any solution of the associated homogeneous equation, which is if we take this equation and drop off the homogeneity, so that's just simply this guy, um, this constant coefficient equation and we know the, know these um, we know how to find the solutions of this guy so we know how to find these y zeros we put in these uh, these solutions that to the associated homogeneous we put them in uh, add them to a particular solution that gives you every possible solution so all I need to do is guess one solution of the of this guy if I can guess one solution y p of x uh, to this equation then uh, after that, I only have to solve the associated homogeneous to get every solution. Uh, so that makes it, in some sense, much easier. It's only a question of guessing one single solution. So that's the good news. The bad news is that, in general, no one knows how to guess a solution for this. Uh, we don't know. Um, we don't know uh, how to find uh, a single solution. Um, for the inhomogeneous problem or non-homogeneous problem uh, for general uh, functions f of x. So we'll have to make do with finding a solution which is uh, for certain special f of x, certain ones for which we have a good guess. And even then, we'll, we'll come up with a method for guessing for certain simple choices of f of x, even then it won't always work. Here are some tricks for trying to come up with guesses for particular solutions. Suppose we were to face a problem in which the um, in which the inhomogeneity that we have to have to deal with is something like a polynomial. Uh, then we might guess that uh, so we might try as a possible solution something like um, a polynomial also maybe of of um, equal degree uh, maybe of about equal degree not too much higher otherwise we probably won't work won't, probably won't work out and not too much lower um, otherwise we probably won't have enough terms um, if it gets to be too high in degree it probably be, may just make a big mess so um, so it's worth trying something like that. And similarly, if we have something like a cosine of some frequency, maybe something like that, plus some constant sine of the same frequency, we might try something similar, uh, cosine of the same frequency and a sine of the same frequency, something like that, uh, because we would expect that when we hit cosines and sines with derivatives, we're going to get cosines and sines of that same frequency, so we have a chance of that popping out. Um, similarly, if we were to try something like 
a multiple of a, a constant multiple of an exponential of some rate of growth, we might try a constant multiple of an exponential of the same rate of growth. Something like that might might work. Um, and if we had something like a polynomial um, uh, times a, a cosine or a sine of a particular frequency, of a sine of a particular frequency, we might try something similar, also a polynomial, also of maybe the same degree, times something like a cosine of the same frequency and a sine of the same frequency. We might try something like that. Um, those are the sorts of tricks we could use. Uh, similarly, if we could have exponential here, we'd put an exponential here probably with the same uh, rate of growth. So it gives us some ideas of some of the things we might try. Let's see if we can do it in some examples. So let's take as a simple uh, example the equation uh, y prime prime plus 3y prime plus 2y is equal to x. Um, so that's inhomogeneous because it's got this x in homogeneity. And our trick was to try a polynomial of about the same degree. Now, that polynomial has degree 1, so we're going to try something of degree 1. But we're not going to try x itself. We're going to try something like maybe y is a constant plus a constant times x. And if we try that, then its derivative is easy to calculate. It's just going to be a1. And its second derivative is going to be 0 because the derivative of a linear function with constant coefficients is just going to be the slope, and then the second derivative will be 0. So that's the, the thing we're going to try. We're going to plug those in here and see what we get. So plug the second derivative is 0, plus 3 times first derivative is a1, plus 2 times this guy, a0, plus a1x. And we want to try and get that equal to x. We want to see if there's a way we can choose the constants a0 and a1 to make that be x. Um, so we're going to put together the constant terms. We're going to put together the 3a1 here and 2a0 has to be the constant term. And that on this side has to be 0. There's no constant. Uh, plus there's an x term here. And that's going to have to match up with the x term here, 2a1x. And so the terms have to match, so this has to match with that, and this has to match with that. So it gives us a system that says 3a1 plus 2a0 is 0, and 2a1 is 1. How many x's there are on both sides have to match. And so uh, when you solve that system, you come up with a0 is minus 3 quarters, and a1 is uh, one half. I won't do the linear algebra for you. So that gives you um, a, a particular solution. Now, now you could try plugging it back in and check and make sure it really works, but it does from, from these calculations here. It really does work. So y is minus three quarters plus one half x is a particular solution. Of the differential equation. Now we might want to know what's the general solution. So we said that all we had to do is find one particular solution, and that's one we found. We found this one. Now to find the general solution of the original problem, we have to try and solve the associated homogeneous equation. That's y prime prime plus 3y prime plus 2y is uh, not x anymore. We cross out the x and we put in a 0. So we get rid of the inhomogeneity, in and we try and do this one. Uh, this associated homogeneous problem. So let's see how to solve that. So we'll look at the associated homogeneous is uh, y prime prime plus 3y prime plus 2y is 0. And um, so we get associated um, auxiliary equation m squared plus 3m plus 2 is 0. And that's m plus, uh, plus m plus 1 times m plus 2, so m is minus 1, or m is minus 2 are the solutions. And so we get that the, the um, solution to the associated homogeneous, is called y0 of x, is uh, any constant times um, e to the minus x plus any constant times e to the minus 2x. So the general solution of the original problem of what was the original problem, y prime prime plus 3y prime plus 2y is x, is we take our particular solution, 
which was um, minus 3 quarters plus x over 2 plus, so that's our uh, particular solution to the homogeneous, to the inhomogeneous problem, plus anything from the homogeneous, which is this guy here, a1 e to the minus x plus a2 e to the minus 2x. So that's the general solution of that differential equation, of that differential equation there. Okay, so that's how we can work out um, a solution of a, of a, a degenerate solution of a differential equation with a, sorry, not this one, the, in, the one with the inhomogeneity, this guy. Um, so the general solution of our differential equation here is this guy. Um, and uh, that's how we can work out uh, an example of, a, of, of including an inhomogeneity. And of course, if we didn't have a good way to guess how to come up with a particular solution, we wouldn't have been able to get started on this problem. So to, uh, to get better at these, you really have to practice a few examples. I don't want to do a lot of examples because uh, it just becomes almost the same as doing this one over and over again. They're all basically the same tricks. We know the trick that when you have, uh, you have an inhomogeneity, that's a polynomial, you try a polynomial about the same degree, and similarly if it's a sine or a cosine and so on. I did say that, however, that this com problem can, uh, can th that well, this method can run into problems. Um, well, what happens if it doesn't work? Um, let's try and find a simple example where it doesn't work. Let's try y prime prime plus y prime is 5. So this is a polynomial uh, of degree 0. So, um, so we might think, okay, well then, let's guess a polynomial of degree 0. So our method says that we should try a particular solution, which would be just a constant. Uh, so then the derivative uh, is, so if y is, uh, is a naught, derivative is 0, y prime prime uh, is 0. But um, that means that y prime prime plus y prime, we want it to be equal to 5. Let's see if we can get it to equal 5. We can't because y prime is 0 and y prime prime is also 0. So we get 0 plus 0. And we're trying to get it to equal 5. It's not working. So not surprisingly, sometimes these tricks just don't work out. So when that happens, um, try x times uh, your guess. Um, see if you can get it to go. So in this example, um, we could try instead of, um, because we failed with our guess of using um, a polynomial uh, of the same degree, let's try instead looking at a polynomial with an x in it, uh, put another x in it. So um, so we'll try um, try a, a particular solution which is not, uh, which, which would have been a constant uh, if, we, if we were um, uh, following our, our method, but we tried that and it didn't work. Let's try putting an x on it and see if now it works. So what do we get? Um, so if y is a naught x, we get y prime is a naught and y prime prime is zero. And so y prime prime plus uh, y prime, we want it to be five, and it gives us zero plus a naught, and that works fine. So a naught is five and that works. So we do get a particular solution. We get y particular is 5x. And then it's not hard to convince yourself that then the general solution, uh, the general solution should be y is, well, we'll just have uh, a constant uh, plus uh, constant times uh, e to the uh, minus x. Um, plus 5x. So I'll leave you to check the associated homogeneous problem has this as a solution, and so that's the general solution. Where do we come across these kinds of problems? Uh, why would we care about solving these uh, these sorts of equations, a y prime prime plus b y prime plus c y equals some f of x? Where do they show up? Uh, the, the most obvious place would be they show up in very simple problems in physics. Consider the motion of a, of a little weight attached to a spring, which is fixed to some wall or something like that. Um, so we imagine this thing is moving around, bouncing around, uh, according to simple physical principles. So we'll let this distance here be x uh, at time t, and, um, and we'll try to see how to put the physics in. Um, so we've got force uh, coming from the spring uh, 
uh, which is stretching. We're not putting gravity in, so we're just going to have the string stretching, for, stretching force. And um, we've also got to worry about the friction. So how does that look when we put the physics in? Um, so the spring um, uh, force is, uh, is proportional to the x of t itself, because as it pulls out, it gets more pulled back in. Um, and then the friction is uh, a force uh, which is proportional to how fast the thing is moving, x dot of t, the derivative in t, because uh, fast moving objects uh, scrape against the, the surface, uh, if we imagine this, this object's lying on a table. So it, it's, uh, the faster it moves, the, the, more, uh, the more strongly it scrapes against the, against the surface of the table. We could also imagine some external force, so we'll have a spring force, we'll have a friction force, and then maybe some external force that acts on it. F. Now, so, uh, at, let's say at time t. So, uh, so then, now our variables aren't called y anymore, they're called x and t. Um, so now what we, what we end up with is, according to Newton, we have uh, mass times acceleration of particle equals now we've got to put in our forces. We're going to have a spring force, which is proportional to x itself. We're going to have a friction force, which is proportional to x dot, or dx dt um, is x dot, uh, the, the velocity, and then plus an external force. So we can think of this as a simple example, as long as these are, let's say, just as long as these are, say, constants. Um, the spring is force is proportional to uh, the to the, the the displacement of the away from equilibrium of the of the um, spring. Um, so uh, so what what we're going to assume is that that proportionality constant is is actually a constant. We'll assume that's also a constant. The friction is a constant there, and then you get a nice example. And we'll also assume, of course, the mass is a constant. So we get a simple example of a system with constant coefficients but with some inhomogeneity. Of course, we have to be careful not to be afraid of changing variables. Previously, we were always making y be y of x, and so we were working with, uh, with derivatives, which were dy dx's. But now we're changing variables, and x is x of t in the physical problem that we're thinking about. And of course, the derivatives involved are derivatives of x with regard to t. Uh, so it's just a question of changing letters, though. Y's become x's, x's become t's. It's not that strange um, to change the mathematics to, to, to some new set of variables. Um, but other than that, that sort of strangeness of using x as a function of t, other than that, it's just the same routine to solve these sorts of equations. So I won't go through examples since we've already done quite a few. In the next lecture, we'll talk about equations with non-constant coefficients.